No? Not yet? Good morning. Welcome, 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 I would say. My name is Jan Fassbinder, and I'm the director of the complexity program at NTU. And I very warmly welcome you to a crude look of the whole, which is our second uh, conference, the second conference of the complexity program of NTU. I'm extremely pleased to see so many of you here. We have an overflow room in case there's more people coming, but I hope we will not have to use it. But there are some places left in, in, uh, in the rows. If you would fill that up, that would be easier for other people to come in, who come in late to find a place on the side. Uh, so to all of you from Asia, we have people from Asia, from Australia, from the United States, from Europe, uh, from Japan, and from places that I don't, I'm not familiar with. To all of you, a very warm welcome. I'm very happy that you're here. And I hope that you will enjoy yourself as much as we enjoyed ourselves by preparing for this conference. Now, before we begin with the conference, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the developments of the complexity program. I'd also tell you some information that is not in the booklet that you got. And that booklet, by the way, you have to, be, to save carefully if you, unless you want to give it away, because there's only one for you and not two. So if you lose it, it's gone. <laughs> That's, um, uh, and finally, after I did all that, I would like to introduce uh, Professor Bertel Anderson, the president of this university, to give the opening address. Now let me start with the, um, uh, with the complexity program to tell you a little bit about it. I can actually talk for two hours about it, but I won't. Um, it started in August 2011, and so it's now a little bit more than a year and a half old. And it started with a very small number of uh, people interested in complexity and um, doing some work in complexity related issues. It now consists of a group that more than 30 people from NTU, of course, uh, and from, the, from Singapore Management University, from the, university, the Singapore University of Technology and Design, and also from the uh, National University of Singapore. We have a number of PhD students by now, about four. We also find, have a few people from industry that have joined. And so it's now become a very nice and active group. You find that curricula, by the way, in the little booklet that you've got. Uh, and that will tell you all, actually that will give you a good idea as to what this complexity community is all about. But in fact, this community is the complexity program. And its members are the core of all the activities that take place within the program. Uh, and the core of those activities is really to set up a number of, uh, to, to prepare the ground or to set up a number of uh, research programs. And I'll tell you about that a little later. But to set up that, those research programs, we have established contact with, uh, with uh, strong working uh, contacts, I would say, with uh, relationship with agencies in, in Singapore, with a number of uh, renowned institutes uh, around the world, like Institute Paralimes, Santa Fe Institute, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, Stockholm Brazilian Center, uh, the Riken Kayo University uh, uh, Institute, uh, Riko Kayo Human Cognition Center in Japan and a number of other institutes. And we need all of those to really get this program uh, up, up and going and at the level that we want. So I'll short you mention, shortly mention to you a few of the programs that we did that we're now developing. One is on governance. And we will have our first big conference or workshop, I would say, um, on that in July this year. Another one is on cities. That's been, we've been working on that longer so far. And one of the things we did in the last uh, month or the last half year is we had a, an NTU-wide working group led by the Complexity Program and by the uh, Sustainable Earth Office that developed an approach to combine the research strength in NTU within an interdisciplinary framework. And that very much fits the nature of this university. Now, that approach starts from the need to simplify the networks of interrelated questions and decision spaces with regards to cities and the way they're managed and planned without losing essential interconnectedness. Now that sounds like a mouthful of complexity jar jargon, and in fact it is, 
but it means that we, it, we, we try to make a reality of the fact that we have um, uh, that interdisciplinary science is inherently interdisciplinary. I mean, complexity science is inherently interdisciplinary. Yeah. Uh, a third program we're working on is brains or uh, 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 cognition. And for that, we signed a collaborative agreement with the Riken Kayo Center of Human Cognition. And under this agreement, uh, Professor Atsushi Iriki, who is somewhere in the, in the audience, uh, became the first visiting professor to the complexity program. Our brain group now leads the development of an NTU-wide program on cognitive science in collaboration with the Nanyang Institute of Technology and Health and Medicine. Uh, fourth program is interactions between social systems and ecosystems. And in, with this, within this theme, now we have two working groups started under the leadership of Professor Steve, Steve Lansing, uh, who will be a full-time uh, full, full visiting professor to the complexity program by, the, uh, by July uh, of this year. And finally, I'd like to mention the most recently started program, Healthcare and Complexity. And that is a theme that is led by Professor Peter Sloat, who is also here. He's the third visiting professor that we attracted that past year. He's also attached to the um, School of Computer Engineering, and he will be one of the speakers today. Uh, not today, but in the conference. Uh, with, the researchers, to be, with the research to be undertaken under those themes, we intend to address real life problems that are relevant to Singapore and Southeast Asia, and for that matter, the rest of the world, while identifying at the same time and understanding the, understanding the underlying principles that lead to the complexity of those problems. The NTU Complexity Program aims to, uh, to achieve a good balance between bottom-up approach that is crucial for originality, for creativity, and for risk-taking, and the top-down approach that ensures relevance to real-world applications. And as I mentioned last year, and for once I'll quote myself, it is my strong conviction that a new, and in many ways still undefined, science like complexity can only make real steps forward if new and risky ideas are generated by the scientist, who then get a possibility to explore those ideas. Now, the management of NTU has recognized this and has supported and a call for high risk, a high payoff seed projects on complexity. The call for proposals is out, and we expect to grant the first project by the third quarter of this year. We've done a lot more, and I'd like to tell you a lot more, but I won't uh, go into any further details. I'd prefer to leave you with this crude look, this somewhat crude look of where we currently are. Uh, I encourage you to approach members of the complexity uh, uh, community. You can identify them through the booklet. They're in the audience, and they'll be very happy to tell you more uh, about the program. And that brings me to this conference. We have 12 great speakers, three of whom I would like to give, uh, to, to give some extra credit, so to say. First one is Murray Gaman, who gave us the title for this conference, and who will reflect on its meaning. The second one is John Holland, who gave us complexity science, and who will share with us the essence of his most recent book, Signals and Boundaries. And the third one is Peter Ho, who I cannot thank enough uh, to take it upon him to replace Ambassador Lam Chong Yong. A little more than a week ago, Ambassador Lam was called upon by the Singapore government to take care of an urgent matter abroad, and to find, and, and so he couldn't come here, and to find somebody of equal stature and eminence like, uh, like Professor Lam on such a short notice seemed impossible until Peter stepped in. So he will give us his view on complexity and governance uh, later in the conference. Well, thank you all for, uh, all, uh, the, uh, we're very happy that all of you are here and give extra luster to this uh, already lustrous conference, I would say. Now for the administrative program. The conference largely follows the format of last year's conference, more is different. 
Each of the speakers will talk for about 45 minutes or more or less, that's up to them, and then fill up the rest of the one and a half hour with questions and answer and discussion. All the talks will be video recorded. And at the end of the conference, we'll post the video recorded talks on, uh, on our website. And if you missed any of the talks, you can follow them then or can view them then. Now, to make sure that during the discussions, your, uh, your questions can be heard uh, by the speakers and the rest of the participants, I'd like to ask you to, to use one of the two standing microphones over there. And if that's too far away from where you are, we have three student helpers here who will be happy to pass you a, a, a hand microphone. Uh, and before you ask the questions, please give, or give your name and, and where you're from so that we can also identify that on the, on the video. Um, after each talk, there will be a break during which you can further uh, discuss with the speakers or among yourselves, or catch up with your iPhones, your Blackberries, or other electronic devices. Now, please switch them off now and during the talks so that you can have full attention to the talks and there will not be disturbing noises in between. The uh, conference booklet basically gives you all the information that you need for this conference, except for the, trans the, the information on the transportation tonight to the dinner. For those of you that need transportation, there will be buses that will go, that will bring you to the venue and back. Uh, for your convenience, we've also to chartered two, uh, two buses that can drop you off at Pioneer MRT after dinner. And if you've not already done so, please let the people at the front desk know uh, if you need transportation. Now with this, I've given you all the background, I think, you need to enjoy this conference and to participate in it fully. And it's now my, my honor and pleasure to introduce to you uh, NTU's president, <laughs> Professor Bertel Anderson. Professor Anderson has been a great and very active supporter of getting the complexity program going at NTU. In fact, he initiated it. And now, as we got as far as we got, he made the next step possible namely to transform the complexity program into a cross-university institute of which NTU already has a number, a number of very excellent examples. I guess that as a president, one of the main challenges is to develop a crude look at the whole. And then to quote Murray Gaman, to allow possible simplifications to take place. I think that some, such simplifications provide a very appropriate background against which to give your opening address. And with that, I now gladly hand the microphone to you. Well, distinguished guests and uh, conference participants, uh, it's a pleasure to wish you good morning. It's a pleasure to welcome you to Singapore. Welcome you to Nanyang Technological University and I hope you will discover its beautiful tropical campus and, of course, welcome you to the conference with the title, as we heard, A Crude Look at the Whole. Uh, a conference that is, of course, uh, is addre addressing various aspects uh, of complexity. And I'm delighted to see that so many people have come here standing in the back. It's sold out. Uh, that's great. And uh, this is our second conference. And, uh, I'm very pleased that we here at NTU can attract the many of the main players in this field to come here. So it's a good sign. I just arrived actually to Singapore two hours ago from uh, after a trip to Europe. So <clears throat> I've been to a very cold Europe, I must say. So I was freezing two days in Berlin. Uh, I was freezing two days in Zurich. So, you see, even though I'm a Swede and should be immune to these cold temperatures, I really felt, wow, I'm back in Singapore. Isn't that warm and nice? So, um, I hope also you now who are coming visitors, maybe many from the Northern Hemisphere, that you are delighted now to take a three, four hours break from, from the freezing winter temperatures and also enjoying the greenery here at the campus and, of course, the conference. 
Singapore is not only a country with a warm, a nice climate, but also a country that invests in a university system, it invests in research. That means that you, if you are a president or provost of universities, you can take new initiatives and the complexity is one. In many countries, maybe even most countries, I would say, governments are often talking about investments into the knowledge society. But typically, unfortunately, it becomes mostly part of the political rhetoric. I have now been in Singapore at NTU for six years, and it has been a rewarding experience, I, I, I would say, um, to see a government, a governmental agencies actually walking the talk and made significant investments into research and education. Singapore has uh, consequently, in a short time, established itself among the prime research intense countries in the world, and of course, that, if you only look 10 years ago, that was not the case. So it's been a very rapid uh, development. NTU uh, has benefited very much from this development. In the beginning of the 2000s, the NTU was mainly a non-research intensive uh, and uh, focused on vocational education in engineering, business, and education. Today, NTU has only 10 years after, has been able to add natural sciences, humanities and social sciences, art, and recently also a medical school together with Imperial College to its um, academic portfolio. It has been able to recruit a high number of international top researchers, established and young researchers, and, uh, and been able to win a number of um, competitive individual grants individual grants as well as high-level block grants from the very generous national competitive funding system here in the country. NTU has also become very in international profile. It's actually ranked, if you believe this ranking, number five in the world uh, in respect to international profile, and I think that's quite um, impressive. Uh, we have 70% of our faculty are international, 70% of our graduate students are international, and, uh, <coughs> and uh, again, in the QS ranking, we are now in the top 50, which is quite high, considering that we was established only in 1991, so that uh, with a good support, you can move academia fast, and I think that's important. Among other things, NTU is also trying, to, we heard here from Jan, to promote interdisciplinary research through the creation of uh, research centers, interdisciplinary research centers across the uh, disciplinary borders, also interdisciplinary graduate schools, and we are trying to break down the disciplinary Berlin walls between schools and abolish sub disciplinary structures within the, the schools to break up the silos, in other words. Um, these uh, inter interdisciplinary centers could be related to sustainability, water and energy, uh, to media, medical technology and earth and environmental sciences. However, our most recent and new institute is indeed the NTU Complexity Institute which actually we regard as uh, our crown jewel when it comes to our focus on interdisciplinary research. And uh, of course, we have been in, in, in inspired by the Santa Fe Institute and of the Paralimas that both Jan and I was involved in, in the, uh, during my European days. So let me give me some backgrounds and reflections on, on, on this topic. A, a paper written by the World Economic Forum's Global Agenda Council on Complex System for the World Leaders in Davos stated, we live in a hyper-connected world that every day becomes more complex and dynamic. The global population continues to rise. Increased trade and travel brings people from diverse cultures and regions into contact with another. The internet and social media now seem to connect each person to everyone else and to make information available to all. 
This accelerating intact, uh, inter interconnectedness has in many ways made life better, but it has also brought greater complexity to, to world affairs. Many of the grand challenges that confront humanity, problems as diverse as rapid urbanization, climate change, the volatility of economical markets, issues around the availability of energy and resources, including food and water, the impact of technology, of new technology, or the loss of biodiversity often seem to entail impenetrable webs of cause and effect. These webs have grown because of the interconnectedness of our world. Our world has become a world without boundaries when it comes to the grand challenges it has to meet. A university like NTU that wants to be relevant in such world needs to minimize the boundaries itself and hence our efforts at NTU I just mentioned. The complexity program at NTU was started, as John said, in August 2011, but it was some uh, planning for several years, including the previous President uh, uh, Su Ganing. And uh, we have made progress in our planning, and the Board of Trustees recently de decided to transform our Cross University Institute. Uh, uh, our program into a cross-university institute, similar to those I already mentioned. It has already attracted, and this is important of course, uh, attracted top international researchers to join NTU or become visiting professors uh, at NTU. And we are very pleased that we have been able to do that. The Complexity Institute will work on a number of themes that have been investigated and prepared in the last years, uh, about one year and a half. The Institute will search for underlying principles for the complex systems that are being studied in, in each of these themes. At the same time, it will uh, network with other complexity institutes in the world, as well as with companies and government as um, appropriate. That may, way it will stand with both feet in the real world and work with the best scientists and problems that the real world has to deal with. John Fassbinder already mentioned the themes of the complexity program has been worked on. So let me say something about their relevance for NTU. Cities are highly relevant uh, as urbanization changes the basis for human life, I would say. To give an idea, in 2030, we expect 60% uh, of the world's population to live in uh, cities, up from 13% in 1900, 29% in 1950, and 50%, it reached that 50% in 2008. Singapore itself, of course, sees itself as an interesting model and a study object for the urban uh, city and the urban environment of tom tomorrow. So this is, of course, one option for us here to, 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 to use our own city as a, uh, as a model system. Interaction between social systems and logical systems is highly relevant for Southeast Asia, as this region is one of the most diverse ecological systems in the world, and at the same time is under the heaviest pressure from changing social systems. To put it, to put it um, simply, we can lose control of our planet if we do not learn to understand and manage the dynamics of the interactions between these two mega systems. Governance is, a, is a, another area, and later in the conference, Peter Ho will reflect on governance in a complex world. Cognition, we see and understand the world through our brains. We interact with others and with the systems we live in through our brains. The world now has uh, seven, human, se seven billion humans and consequently seven billion brains. Uh, and uh, each brain works on its own, but it also works in interactions with others. 
The microscopic behavior of all those interacting brains follows from the microscopic behavior of individual brains, and the individual brains follows the effect of cells and neurons in our brains. Complexity science is important for understanding of how microscopic behavior can be deduced from microscopic behavior. That is, of course, a key issue. So let me conclude. Uh, I like very much the title of this year's uh, accrued look at it all, and we heard that uh, it was Gelman who, who has coined that, and of course we are very proud that he's here in the audience today. I also liked, I must say, uh, uh, title of last year's conference uh, from Phil Anderson, not only because of the surname, but, uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, more is different. I like that. More is different. Think about that. I think that's a, a, a good thing in the same class as this year. So, dear participants, enjoy, enjoy and engage in our conference, a crude look at the whole, uh, the coming days here at NTU. I wish you a lot of fun and, of course, inspiration. That's what it's all about. Thank you.